Dr. Max Gomez, CBS 2 News. He was a natural. Dr. Max Gomez was the chief medical correspondent here at WCBS since June of 2007, with an earlier on-air stint in the 1990s. He worked in other newsrooms as well in New York and Philadelphia. A pillar. Um, he was one of the uh, signature pieces of this place, as I like to call him. Um, yeah, you know, certain places have foundational pieces. Dr. Max was just one of those guys that every time you saw him, um, you immediately identified not only as Dr. Max, but as CBS 2's Dr. Max. Max had a way of connecting to us one-on-one -on, -one on the set, to the viewer, right through that camera lens. He wasn't speaking uh, medical over our head mumbo jumbo stuff. He was speaking to us as human beings, to our hearts. Max Gomez was born in Cuba and later moved with his family to Miami. He graduated cum laude from Princeton University, earned his PhD from the Wake Forest School of Medicine, and did a postdoctoral fellowship at Rockefeller University. His academic track was in health and science, but ultimately his depth of medical knowledge combined with an easy, relatable style proved to be the perfect combination to develop a strong broadcast presence. What the study did not tell us though is exactly how too much or too little sleep leads to those clogged arteries. He talks to our viewers the way he talks to us, you know, our, as friends. He always wants to help people and to just get it down to the most basic information. He was in tune with the viewer. In this business, you have to have a connection. If there's no connection, then there's no message. Dr. Max mastered that. Heel of the hand right in the center of the chest. Lock elbows, 100 beats per minute, compression. Does your EB hurt? Mm, well, only when I have a boo-boo. We're standing behind the main set in Studio 46. This is where the weather folks work on the show and where they would mic up the reporters that were filing a report. You would never hear Dr. Max come in. You'd just turn around. Maybe I'd get a Hey Jono. <laughs> and then they'd mic him up. He was such a quiet force, but somebody you could always count on. And there was much more to Dr. Max. In addition to his medical reporting, he's had varied career interests, including co-authoring three health and science books and working on numerous advisory boards, which found him crossing paths with presidents and popes. My first meeting with the Pope was a year ago, November, right after a small audience with scientists and theologians held in an ornate hall right outside his private apartments. That's me in the front row left. There was always great depth to his medical reporting, but never more so than when Dr. Max candidly shared a number of his own medical challenges with his TV family. Dr. Wolf bends my fingers back to break the softened cords. I actually feel them pop in my hand. I remember when he had done a story on his father and I hadn't seen the story yet. And then when we finished, I was just in tears because it touched my heart so much that he would share such a sensitive issue. His, essentially his life savings had, uh, were gone. Here he was helpless and being taken advantage of left and right. And he's also a family man. He, you know, always spoke fondly of his kids. Um, they were everything to him. And um, that, that spoke to the type of person and the type of person we think of when we think of Max no. Gomez. As with all of his reporting during the swirl of the pandemic, he was a steady voice of reason. If you're angry or hate wearing a mask, your child will pick up on that and it'll make a difficult school experience that much worse. The key to reopening the economy is massive, accessible, and affordable testing. And in an interesting side note, his work from home broadcasts caught the eye of the New York Times, which commented on Dr. Max's immaculate apartment and tasteful artwork. So whether he was reporting on cutting edge medicine. The next step in virtual colonoscopy is what's called immersive colonoscopy or everyday issues. Some experts offer melatonin as a sleep aid. Most studies suggest it should be safe for teens, but check with your pediatrician. The key to staying safe and warm in this weather, especially when there's a lot of wind chill, is to cover all exposed skin, starting with a good pair of gloves. And since this is New York, there's always someone who just won't listen. 
Dr. Max could make sense out of the most complex issues and always connect with his audience. There's no evidence that the vaccines cause infertility. He was a consummate professional, no matter the realm, whether winning multiple Emmy Awards or receiving other noteworthy citations. Congratulations well to both you guys. Now, I don't know, how do we address you now? Uh, we have to, Dr. Like, Gray here. <laughs> he offered us so much, not just in regard to everything he did every day as a consummate professional, as a reporter on the air, but just as a personal friend. Just lovely, wonderful. There's not anything more. There's, There are not the words to describe him. He was just that loved here at CBS. But more than anything, Dr. Max Gomez was our Dr. Max, a go-to source in the newsroom for anything and everything medical and beyond. He was our in-house consultant for whatever ailed us, eager to help, genuinely concerned, and never thought twice about going that extra mile. He does it all with this crazy sense of humility. I mean, he's just the most humble man you'll ever know. And if you look at his accolades and his accomplishments off the charts, and yet he's just... He's like good old Dr. Max, and, and that is what I love about the guy. It's hard for me to talk about Max uh, not having him right across the hallway because that conversation, it feels like it's still going on. He's not here, but I feel like I walk into his office and I'm like, ah, oh, Max, where are you? And th that's how I feel now. That's how I feel now. I want the conversation to go on, but... Dr. Max could converse on anything, sports, travel, current events, whether it was mundane or esoteric. It seemed like there wasn't anything he didn't know or hadn't experienced himself. He was a great friend and a trusted advisor and confidant to all of us here. And so we hope he is watching right now, smiling, because he knows he was and always will be our Dr. Max.